ballot in February of this coming year. We currently are uh, operating under a three-year levy that was passed in 2016 that provided levy collections for 2017, 2018, and 2019. Um, the uh, state, as you know, then, um, the passage of 2242 under the clearing resolution or law changed the whole funding mechanisms for schools and that impacted levies. So I'll try to give you some background of, of where we were and where we're going and why we're going there. And so, and then please ask me any, any questions you have in terms of clarification. So um, this is actually the sample ballot from back in 2016, February 9th of 2016. And we'll see, we at that time uh, were asking for a three-year levy uh, starting at 2.6 million uh, in 2017, going up to 2.9 million in 2019, which is the current levy collection that we're operating under under this year's budget. When we originally advertised this levy, um, as you can see, it was calculated to be $2.87 a thousand in year one and up to $2.99 in year two. Under the old system, the way this worked was the board would say we need $2.679 million <coughs> next year in addition to our state funding dollars to operate our district in the manner that our community wants us to operate. You would then send that down to the elections department and the assessor would figure out based on the total assessed valuation of the district, how many dollars per cent or how many dollars per thousand it would take to raise that 2.79 million. And then that would then go on people's tax bills. And so the number we would have here that we put out ahead of time would be an estimate that the assessor would give us to say, and they would say, well, based on current assessed valuation, we would determine it to be about $2.87. So um, this is uh, an example, an historic example, and I, I apologize for not being able to blow this up any larger, but I couldn't get it to, um, it's an old PDF file that um, I couldn't convert. But what this shows is the dollars per thousand that our taxpayers have been paying since 2009 for levies. And if you look at um, the far right green column under tax rates, it says operating levy. And um, if you can read that, which is very hard to do, I will put my glasses on and read it on mine. Um, that first, uh, in 2009, it was $2.14 a thousand. It went up to $2.73, then to $3.12, then to $3.40, then to $3.76. And then it started coming back down, primarily because our community started growing faster than the need for dollars, dollar increases was happening. So under the current tax year, <coughs> the, 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 excuse me, under last school year's uh, budget, 2017-18, we collected uh, $2.68. And again, that would be the last number above that uh, black line that corresponds to 2017 over here on the left. Um, predicted to be under 2018, and again, this is a year old because this, this chart was completed for the bond. It was just the examples used for the bond. So in 2018, it was estimated to be $2.58 is what our tax, our, our constituents would be paying per thousand. So then um, the next thing to look at in terms of how we've changed the funding for schools, and what this is, is a table that comes from the assessor's office and it lists the total valuation of properties in different districts within our district, the district that the assessor uses. And the important number is down here at the very bottom is the total. And uh, the first, the first, column shows one billion four hundred and seventy five million dollars and that's the total assessed valuation you'll see total AV at the top the number that we are concerned about is the third column over which is taxable AV excess levy which is what we or the board what I'm asking the board to approve is a is um, a uh, excess levy and that total valuation for our district for this current year is estimated to be one point two or one billion two hundred and seventy eight million dollars. That is up substantially from three years ago in 2016 when we passed the last bond. That it was at just over 
one billion dollars back then. So we've had almost a 25% increase in the total valuation of our district in the last three years. Some of that is due to the property um, exchange that we did with Ridgefield at the junction. And then a lot of it is just due to the fact that uh, one, as you know, we're building a lot of new homes, whether it's in the county or in, in our inside the city limits. And then the third piece is that the, which all of us, if you live, which you all do, <laughs> you saw on your current tax bill that your assessed valuation went way up this last year. And the reason that happened was because our county had fallen behind in the ratio between the market value of your property, the actual market value, based on sales that were occurring in the year and their assessed valuation of those properties. And so there's a, a state law, and I don't remember the, the percentage detail, but it was something like the, the real market value and the assessed value by the assessor had to be within, I think it was 5% of each other. And we had fallen out to being about 8% apart. And so part of that large increase you saw in the value of your property personally was the assessor trying to make that gap and close that gap down between what the assessed valuation was and what the true market value was based on current sales. So under the new system of supporting schools, uh, the state now has seen fit in what they call the levy swap we call the levy swipe, where they instituted a state tax two that you see at the bottom of your personal tax piece. It amounted to about a dollar per thousand that the state collected statewide from every taxpayer and pulled that into the state coffers and then turned around and spread that back out to districts. Now, theoretically, and in fact, the center is a winner in that process because when you collect a dollar per thousand from every thousand dollars of assessed valuation in the Seattle Tacoma area versus the assessed valuation that you might collect out of the center and bring that back into one pot and then send it back out in a per student valuation process, that's a win for our taxpayers. So we're gonna get back more in that process from the state for that dollar per thousand on our local tax than what we're losing on the other side. So that, so that, that was a win for us in, in, that, in that process. Um, the other piece that is a win for, this, for us over time is that we are going to be limited, and I'll explain this in a minute um, on, this, um, on this new levy, is that we will be limited to $1.50 per thousand collection from here moving forward. So the state's passed a law saying you are limited so a dollar fifty per thousand, um, no matter who you are across the state, your levy is a dollar fifty per thousand. We are a loser in that piece because again, if we're Seattle Tacoma and we get a collect about fifty per thousand, we have a lot of thousands. If we're in the center and we only get a collect about fifty per thousand, we don't have as many thousands per student as they have. So we're a loser on that side of the equation. We're a little bit of a winner from the perspective that as our community grows and all these new homes get built, and hopefully the city finds a way to develop the exchange out of the LaCenter Junction. And I, I saw just in uh, the article in the Reflect, if anybody happened to read this week's, uh, the mayor talking about a push to develop the area off Timmins Road and, and LaCenter Road as well, and that I mean, there's some commercial property over there. Um, as those pieces are developed and our homes are built, that will increase our total taxable excess levy valuation from 1.278 upward, and we will be able to collect $1.50 on all of those things. What used to happen in the old system was the board would pass again, we need $2.6 million, and you would get the $2.6 million, and then as homes were built and assessed valuation went up, the taxpayers' dollars per thousand went down. Um, and in this case, it's going to be $1.50 flat. Um, so, the next challenge then, and this gets a little, a little deep in the woods, and I apologize for that, but the challenge then is to come up with a levy that allows us to collect a dollar figure that maximizes our dollar fifty per thousand. And the reason this gets tricky is there's a law here that the state passed that if you do not collect your full amount of collectible taxes at a buck fifty per thousand, you don't qualify for levy equalization. 
So we are a levy equalization district, again, because we are property poor, and we get on, this year we're getting, I believe, uh, just under $900,000 in levy equalization, and under the new formula, the best Lori and I can tell, is we will be collecting about $742,000 in levy equalization. And that, again, goes back into this big fund to, you know, to pay for the operation of the district. So the challenge then is to make sure that we asked for a dollar figure that when divided by that assessed valuation comes out to at least a buck fifty per thousand um, because that's what the assessor is going to do. They're, gonna, they're going to roll back as the term they use to a dollar fifty a thousand. So when you look at this, what we've done is we know, let me, let me, let me, I'm going to come back to this, but what we're asking for then, or I'm asking the board to approve, is uh, 2.2 million in 1920, that's the school year, uh, 2.5 in 2021, and 2.9 in 21 22. It gets even further complicated because the levy collections don't match up with the school calendar business year. So we're off by six months. So what's happening right now under this current budget year of 2018-19 is in November, we collected half of that 2.954 million up there that we passed under the old levy. If they hadn't changed the law in April of 2019, coming up here, we would collect the other half of the, you know, we'd, we'd get the other half. But they did change the law, so they're gonna roll back our second half of our collection to about 50,000. So, this is the next slide to show you, and if I could, no, I guess you can see that. So in 2017-18, that was last year, we collected 2.797 million, and we spent it to make up state funding shortfalls in the following ways. And I will share this out with the board. I'll, this will be on the website, so you guys can look at it in more detail. We'll, we'll connect it over there in that right-hand corner. Um, but those are, and again, these are round numbers. These are not down to the penny or even the dollar for that matter, but these are, these are really, really good. Because again, this comes off of the F-196 that Lori just completed. So we know those numbers are solid. The number you'll see that's, that stands out right away is the $1 million spent on staffing costs. And what that represents are those deemed done days that went into the teacher's contract in order to backfill what the state wasn't paying them on the state salary schedule. So that's, that's the chunk there that came out of the, of the levy. Uh, in the current school year, the current budget year, we will collect 2.365. But again, that went down from the 2.7 because we only get a buck fifty of that second half of the collection. So our total levy collection this year goes down by about four hundred thousand dollars. And as you can see, based on our budget, the, again the number that stands out is that we reduced the staffing cost expense down to six hundred thousand, and that's the number that everybody's heard. There's three hundred thousand dollars in there that went to backfill. Um, the teacher pay scale to get them close to what our neighbors, well, within $10,000 per year of what our neighbors are paying. And 300,000 of it went to pay for all of our exit duty contracts. So those are all those contracts that are things for like um, science club and, and um, extra duty things, uh, PD, professional development days, and, and all those kind of things. So it's extra duty, it's outside of the 180 day contract. So, so there's about 300,000 there for that and $300,000 to try to get that, that number uh, where it should be. <laughs> so then, based on next year's budget, which would be the first six months collection of this new levy that we're gonna pass, we will collect $1.917 million. And again, that's based on that total district valuation of $1.27 billion. Uh, and this is, kind of where I would see that going. And again, this will be determined by the board when we end the budgeting process. In the spring, we'll lay this out. But again, what you'll notice is these numbers are all much reduced mm -hmm. from the current budget year. Um, again, $300,000 coming out of the staffing costs because again, under the new state law, we cannot use levy dollars for basic ed pay. We can use it for enrichment. So we can still use that 300,000 that we're paying for science club and professional development and those kind of things, because those are 
those are enrichment activities so that's still legal to do that but the other three hundred thousand we could defend using that last year because we were still collecting under the old model so and that's what everybody else across the state did as well that's kind of how that worked um, but you'll also notice what I've just kind of roughed out here is kind of my own you know quick look at where could I pull those dollars from with the least amount of agony to the departments involved and again we will all have to talk about that at the board level and um, you know with with administration and everybody else in terms of where where that money does come from and, and how we're gonna work that but that is again um, that 1.917 million might go up a little bit depending on again how many homes get built at about 50,000 you know every three hundred thousand dollar home or I should say every five hundred thousand dollar home that gets built over here is worth seven hundred fifty dollars to us every year so um, th th there's a tiny light at the end of the tunnel from that perspective so um, going back then to this piece we took you know again with the number we know that we have assessed valuation right now we think we would collect 1.9 one seven million at about fifty thousand. We think that's what we collect, but I can't afford to be wrong because if I'm wrong, it costs us seven hundred some thousand dollars to let the equalization. So I've taken that number and I've increased it by um, a very large amount, twenty percent, to get to two point four. You'll see twenty twelve up or excuse me, twenty twenty at the top, two million four hundred five thousand dollars. I feel that's safe to say we're not going to see, you know, because they've already made the adjustment with the assessor's office to get us back equal to what our, our market values are, and we would have to see over a 20% increase in tax evaluation next year. So it's not like three years down the road where they may have some commercial interest at the juncture of the schedules. Then I took that number and I increased it by 15% each year across, 15% more. So you'll see then in 2022, we're up to 3.18 million, which is a very large number in terms of assessed valuation. That's my recommendation. Now, somebody could say, well, why, why would you even try to cut that close? Why don't we just put 3 million here, and 4 million there, and 5 million there? And my answer to that is, we still have to sell this to the, to the taxpayer and the voter. And, and when, if they see numbers like that, one of you know, our response is, well, it's gonna get rolled back to about 50,000. And I know what a lot of taxpayers would say to me when I say, well, it's going to get rolled back to about 50000 Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really? How do you guarantee that? How do you know that? How can you, you know, those kind of things. So I think we have to find, my, my, uh, uh, my ask here is that we have to find that happy medium between a number that can be understood, doesn't scare people, can be explained, um, and at the same time ensures that we hit the maximum target at about 50,000 based on our evaluation, which would be that 1.9 plus growth. So, um, questions? What a game. Yeah. Uh, yes. And I, um, and there is, I will say, and that's one of the reasons it scares me, that number, and again, board has total control over this. And I told a lot of people that, you know, um, there is, there is, um, energy out there by some politicians to want to raise that dollar fifty to say a buck eighty five so that the districts can collect more money locally. Um, my response every day I've talked to them say that would be fine, but our board's not gonna pass a levy at a buck fifty and then turn around and raise it to a buck eighty five. That's not gonna happen if you know I just know you guys well enough to know that if we tell the taxpayers one thing and you know we sell the bond so to speak or pass the bond based on our, our word, that's what we're doing. We're not going to go back and, um, and, and we have a good, I think a very solid reputation for, for doing what we say we do. Um, but it, that is out there. Um, you also heard from Ann Rivers that there's no interest in, you know, at least on one side of the aisle, there's no interest in doing that. Um, I'm not so sure about the other side of the aisle. So I have a meeting next week with Kathy Bounds and Senator Cleveland uh, down in Vancouver to talk about the same thing we've talked about with Senator Rivers and Senator Braun and Representative. Um, and so we'll, we'll keep continue you to beat that drum. And, and she, Senator Cleveland, is from, from the Democratic side of the aisle. So that may be uh, an interesting look. But the, the two points, 
405 figure could potentially represent a buck eighty, because you're saying it's added by 20 percent? Uh, it could. Yeah, I didn't do the math, Lynn, but yeah, that would probably handle a buck eighty, something like that. And, and again, my perspective on this is that um, I don't know that we need that money. Meaning, I, I think we can run the district on the buck fifty per thousand. I don't think it's easy. I don't think it's going to be. Um, it's not going to be what it was five to ten years ago. Yeah, um, but you're saying the way the process works is we ask for two point four zero five. And if that ends up being more than about fifty a thousand, we could, because uh, valuations don't go up or whatever, we would actually get less than that. We would have asked for that, but we would get capped at about fifty. Correct. Yeah. We are not going to collect two point four million. Exactly. We're going to collect two point two to two point three ish. Actually, that year we will probably collect about two million because next year we would collect on the first year that we know one point nine. Uh, if I have my number here, if I remember which. Which, uh, uh, but if they change the rules in the in Olympia, which they did in this current cycle, right? That's, like the board, that's where that's where what that question from the taxpayer yeah, becomes valid. Back. If I get the question or you get the question, how can you guarantee? The honest answer is I can't simply because well, no, Olympia does what is, Olympia the, wants to do. The answer, the honest answer, is yes, you can. Um, because the actual, and I don't, uh, maybe it's <coughs> yeah, because this resolution authorizes the assessor to only collect a buck fifty a thousand. Oh, okay. So the board is telling it, you know, we're putting those numbers in there, but when you read it, um, and if I can find it for you. So we're saying we estimate it to be 2.4 and we would cap it, at, but we will not collect Yeah, right here under section two, calling of the election, um, you'll notice uh, general fund education programs and operations tax levy all on the taxable property within the district. The assessed value of such representing 100% of true and fair value, da, 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 shall be made annually for three years, commencing in 2019 for a collection of 2020 of the estimated dollar rate of tax levy required to produce such an amount being 150 per thousand of assessed valuation. Okay. Um, and so that would be the, that's the directive to the assessor that they're going to roll that back to buck fifty. What are you know, they're just going to collect a buck fifty? Okay. And this is, this isn't just so us. So we're we're asking for a high enough dollar amount in case that buck fifty goes up to that. Correct. That's but, exactly right. Okay. Because but, we can't. But predict. it's not even if they went way through the roof. And that assessed value was 2.7. The, the, it's not going to go above the buck. Correct. It's about 50. Okay. And, and, and the we danger, can honestly look the taxpayer in the eye. Yes. And the, da the danger of this is, again, of uh, whatever, if we go all the way back here to our assessed valuation piece, uh, sorry if I can find it here, like right here, we're at 1.278, and that's the number that equates to that 1.91 currently. Yeah. The, you know, we take another year, and this last year, we had a 13% increase. Yeah. And we saw, if you did your tax numbers, you saw a 20% increase mm -hmm. on your valuation, right? But the total district number went up 13%. Now, I know mine went up 20%. And that's pretty much everybody I talked to that were in the district saw their valuation go up 20%. So this number covers, covers that, even if it did that again, which it won't, I don't believe, because again, that factor that the assessor Part of that was to make good on the difference between market value and assessed valuation that they were under the gun for having fallen behind for. So this number is only going to go up now based on increases in new homes being built and uh, you know and maybe a commercial property. But again, we're only a year out, um, and if nothing else, they just took a million dollars off the tax roll the city did. So <laughs> whole other conversation. Uh, <laughs> and the mayor's not here, so I'm not really picking up. Um, so, uh, so that's, that's what I'm asking you to do is to, to pass this, uh, resolution that authorizes me then to go down to the elections department and file for the February, um, uh, election with these numbers. And, um, we have to do it by, um, roll call vote. Um, are there any other questions or?
Joshua. 